Well, hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zalke, and guess what came in the mail today? Yeah, my Stratomatic cards came. And I got not only the 2019 cards, but I also did get the 1962 cards. So we're going to take a look at some of those today as a, you know, a little sneak preview of some of the players. Some of the more interesting cards. Um, I haven't cut them all down yet so because uh, I wanted to get this video out, but there are some interesting cards even in the ones that I that I got down that I was able to uh, break down so far. And we're gonna start that with the card of one Mr. Mitch Garver of the Minnesota Twins. And there's his card. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty, isn't it? Now, he's on one of my teams. And uh, as you may or may not know, he, uh, in 2019, last year, he uh, hit 273, but in 311 at-bats, he had 31 home runs. And that's what that looks like. Now, if we... Uh, if we go through and we find the main man, um, um, what's his name? The DH. I'll know when I run across him. Um, but he he has a, a card that looks nearly as good. Let's see here. And here's Ty here's Tyler Duffy, relief pitcher. All of a sudden, he's good. I mean, I had this guy on my team a couple of years ago, and then I cut him because he was like a started out as a starter. Then he went back and forth between starting and relieving, and wasn't good at any of it. And now, last year in 58 innings, he has a 250 earned run average. Who knew? So, um, yeah, Cruz, Nelson Cruz, that's who I'm looking for. So let's see, he's got to be in here because he was on the Minnesota Twins. Probably. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's almost as many. He hit 311, and he had, there's the front of the card, he had 41 home runs in 454 at-bats. So I guess I could see that card being nearly as good or even possibly better than Mitch Garver's. So there's his card. And, uh course no position on it so if you were looking for Nelson Cruz to play a position for you you're going to be a little disappointed so that brings us to the Houston Astros the trash can crew and there's uh, there's George Springer's card not a bad card uh, a lot of walks though against uh, lefties and a center field two with a negative two arm. You know, take that. And Joe Smith. Huh. Look at that. Who knew that Joe Smith was that good last year? Yeah, he uh, he was 1-0 and with a 180 earned run average. And in 25K, he only pitched 25 innings. So that's why the card is so good. So then you got El Tuve, Jose El Tuve, again possibly benefiting from people banging on trash cans, but who knows. And he had in 500 at bats, he had 31 home runs. Who, man, how does that little guy hit 31 home runs? Unbelievable. So anyway, and then you got Jake Marisnik. Now we're not going to look at his card for batting, but he is a center field one which could help you probably a little bit. 292 at bats, he could play full time in our league, I know that. And let's see, Wade Miley. Yeah, Wade Miley, this guy, a few years ago for Baltimore, looked like he was falling off the tracks. Now all of a sudden he's good. Sometimes I just don't get it. And then, of course, the Rookie of the Year 
either candidate or the guy who actually won it, uh, Jordan Alvarez. 27 homers and 313 at bats and a 313 batting average. So there's that card. That's pretty good. That is one good card right there, buddy. So yeah, if this guy comes up in, in my draft, I'm taking him. If I can get him, I mean, I picked like 24th overall. So yeah, a guy like this should be gone by then. But you never know because sometimes people make strange choices in their drafts. So uh, let's see. Now, now I'm going to point out just how far here um, Miguel Cabrera has fallen. This is, this is Miguel Cabrera's card. And you have to wonder if that guy's ever going to recapture the magic again. I mean, that's not, that's not good at all. 493 at bats, 12 homers. Now he hit 282. So, I mean, you know, he'll hit all right for you. And his on base was 346. So he'll get on base. But if you have Miggy, you want home runs. You want big flies. You don't want him, you know, knocking a single. So, anyway, that's, that's Detroit. Let's see now. Here are my boys, the White Sox. And there, right, right on top, is my boy of the boys. And that's Timmy Anderson. Tim Anderson. And that card is going to be nice for me this year. Because I do have him on my Stratomatic team. Although, uh, he is a shortstop four. But he's a stealing B, running one to 15. And he's got those, uh, and he's got that kind of card. Now, here's another guy I got, although he's not that great, and that is Adam Engel. <laughs> Adam Engel, really not that great, but he is on my team along with Tim Anderson, and he will be one of my backup outfielders. But he hit 242. This guy, I think, if he could ever hit like around 260, 270, he would be a monster because uh, on the advanced side, he's a center field one with a negative one arm. So that's real good. Um, so yeah, we got some guys that had bad seasons. Just a little uh, Col there's Colome, the closer. Always gets me, you know, guys that have a lot of walks. But yeah, this dude against lefties though. Against lefties, man, he is lights out. So, and Johan, Johan Moncada, there he is. There's his card. His breakout year, you know it. That was the breakout year for Johan Moncada. 511 at bats, a 315 batting average, and a 367 on base percentage. 548 slugging. So, yeah, pretty good. And then, of course, Aaron Bummer, relief pitcher. Relief, relief pitcher extraordinaire. Aaron Bummer. I might take that guy. I mean, I think he's available in our draft, too. So, we'll see. And then Yolmer, who I don't believe even has a team yet, but he's a second base one. Now, there's the hitting card. But again, the really kind of a spectacular thing about him is that he's a second base one, which I think is kind of crazy. Second base one E10. But running one to 14, and uh, yeah, nobody, I don't think anybody's picked him up. It's kind of strange. So then you got JD on Boston, JD Martinez. That's a nice card, especially against lefties, man. That is one crazy good card against lefties. And as a right-handed batter, you would think, yeah, probably should be. I mean, he uh, hit 36 homers in 575 at bats and a 304 batting average. Yeah, that card against lefties, man. Wow. Just wow. That's all I'm going to say. So let's see what else we got here. 
stands out. Not a lot, although you now here you got Eovaldi. Huh. Yeah. You know, we're going to show, you know, we're equal opportunity here. We're going to show the good and the bad. So there's Nathan Eovaldi. Anybody got him on their team? Yeah. Might want to try to trade him. Maybe convince somebody that they need someone with a, with a card that bad. And there, of course, is Devas. Third base. But, uh, yeah. Third base four and a shortstop five E88. You just don't see that anymore. And there's a reason for that. So, let's see. What do we got? Uh... I know for the Lindor fans out there, you got, there's Lindor's, the front of his card. And he was a shortstop one, obviously. Shortstop one, E12. And there's the back of Lindor's card. So, not a bad card. And, you know, 32 homers for a shortstop. I really, you know... Wish I had guys like that, although I do have Tim Anderson. But Tim Anderson can't play defensively very well, so it's not as good a thing. All right, so anyway, that's, uh, that's a bit of a look at the 2019 American League, because I haven't gotten even gotten to the National League yet. But now we, we're going to show you a couple of 1962 players. And, of course, we're going to start with my White Sox from 1962. And we're going to start with Sherm Lawler. And the reason I'm going to show you Sherm Lawler is because if you watched my video about the all-time, in the MLB 19, the show, all-time White Sox versus all-time Detroit, Sherm Lawler was our catcher. Now, I'm not sure why this guy right here would be the all-time catcher for the Chicago White Sox. He This particular year, he hit 268 with two homers. And he had, well, he had a 369 on base. That's not too bad. But he was a catcher three with a plus one arm. So, not, not too good. And let's see here. Eddie Fisher. We got early win. Of course, this was not a good year by early win. There's the card. And uh, he had a 446 earned run average. It was 7 and 15. Allowed 171 hits in 168 innings. So not really good. And then uh, Gene Green, 11 home runs and 143 at bats and hit 280. So there's that card. See, I always see guys like this, and then I think to myself, why didn't they actually play this guy more? I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's because their splits are bad. They, they can only bat against one hand or the other. But Juan Pizarro. He was a big guy for the uh, 60s White Sox. And there he is. There's his card. 12 and 14 with a 381. And there's Nellie Fox. Nellie Fox hit 267. And there's his card. So, uh, Turk Lown, love that name. There's Turk Lown of the 62 White Sox. He was 4 and 2 with a 304 earned run average in 56 innings. Luis Aparicio, shortstop one. And there's his card. Now, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to apologize up front here because, of course, the team everybody would want to see from 1962 is the Mets. But I haven't broken them down yet. Again, I wanted to get the video out. Whoa, this guy 
hit 380 in 50 at bats. Now, yeah, granted, it was just 50 at bats, but he hit 380 with six home runs. Walt Bond. Oh, wait, he's on Cleveland. All right. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't matter what team he's on. Could you imagine this guy in a league where there was no, like, usage rules? That would be crazy. Man, that guy is good. So, but anyway, I need to make sure he gets on, gets his way over to Cleveland. Uh, Jim Landis, shortstop one. See, I know a lot of these guys because I did a Stratomatic season on the computer where I, like a 1960, I think it was 67. I did like a 1967 uh, season on the computer and uh, a lot of these guys were on the team. Centerfield won though. Negative one arm. So there's that and now let's go look at Boston and see what they've got out here. Yeah, I love, man, I love it when these cards come. It's like Christmas Day for me. Um, Gary Geiger. I don't know how many of you have heard the, uh, the piece by um, Bob Costas where he talks about playing his, uh, I mean, Gary Geiger this year, hit, he had 466 at-bats and hit 249 with 16 homers. But he uh, he talks about playing his cousin in Stratomatic and uh, Gary Geiger at that, I guess with the set they were playing was like a backup. And he um, he was a backup player and he had like he had one of those cards where not a lot of hits on it, but he had like a home run one to fifteen fly ball or something. And um, he would, you know, it's not a guy that you would want to play. But if you were down, you needed a run, and you had very little pinch hitting on the bench, that's a guy you would put up, and you would just hope to roll that. And he actually did roll that. And, uh, man, Lou Clinton. Who is this guy? That's not bad. He, uh, Lou Clinton this year... Hit 294 and 398 at bats with 18 homers. A lot of managers in this set, too. I mean, I just went past Ru Russ Nixon, not worth showing. And I saw Whitey Herzog was on Baltimore. Um. Uh, Chet Nichols is a reliever. There's Yaz, Carly Ostremski, whose grandson is in the 2019 set. But there's the, the original Yaz in 1962, and he had 646 at bats. Who gets that many at bats anymore? And hit 296 with 19 homers. And he was a left field one with a negative two arm. Which is pretty good when you're playing left field in, in uh, Fenway. Alright, not too much there in the Boston, on the Boston front. So let's take a look at uh, some Baltimore Orioles. Chet Nicholson. Now, Chet Nicholson, he was not good. He had 173 at-bats and hit 173. But the reason I'm going to show him is because this is one of the guys that was on the 1960, I think 1967 White Sox. So I know him from doing my season. A lot of walks. And that's how he was. He was an on-base guy that couldn't hit. And that really, I don't understand that. If you can't hit, how are you walking? You know, what pitcher is out there thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to walk this guy because he can't hit. But, I mean, it's crazy how it happens. And it happens, 
you know, I'm not going to say it happened a lot, but it happens more than it should. So, um, here's Hoyt Wilhelm. He had a good year. He was only 7 and 10, but he had a 194 earned run average and only allowed 64 hits in 90, 93 innings. So, that's a pretty good card. I mean, you know, I'd use it, that's for sure. Hoyt Wilhelm, man. Especially against lefties. And then uh, you got Brooksy, Brooks Robinson. Third base one, E11, second base three, and a shortstop three. So that guy was a pretty good infielder. I mean, he was a spectacularly great third baseman. But apparently he wasn't too bad even at some of the other infield positions. Now that year, Brooksy hit 303 with 23 home runs and 634. Mm, that's a pretty good offensive year. He's not really usually known for having been a great um, offensive third baseman. But uh, Earl Robinson. So anyway, uh, that's I guess that's pretty much it that I've got to show. But, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be going through these cards and breaking them down. And then I'm probably, I got my draft coming up a week from Friday. So I'm probably going to break aside, you know, put aside the guys that are free agents that I can draft. And then I'm going to put them in, like, you know, huge stacks, different stacks by position and whatever. And then have the guys that are most coveted on top and then all the way down to the guys on the bottom that I would probably rather not have. And then um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, again, my team in this particular league that we're talking about, my team has a great offense and sorry pitching. So it's not going to be good anyway. I'm going to have to pretty much just, you know, take my lumps this year watch a fun team that hits a lot of home runs and gets a lot of hits and gets on base and sometimes wins games 12 to 11 and then um, maybe finishes with, I don't know, 68, 69 wins and then next year keep my draft picks and then go in, get some good pitching, hope that some of my pitchers bounce back like Kyle Freeland and then... Um, and then I should have a much better team next year. This year I won't, but at least I'll have a team that can provide some fireworks and it'll be fun offensively to watch it play. So anyway, I hope you liked uh, that look at some of the players and their cards. And um, I will be talking to you soon. But right now it's Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.